They are indeed. So the little cubs all of a sudden shot up and they're now running straight northwards. So I think moms have called them. You can see them running in front here. So they think possibly there's a sign of food. That's why they're running so quickly. And oh, there the moms are back as well. So we've got everyone back on this side, which is fantastic news. And look at this when they greet each other, how cool this is going to be. Look, there we go. Yes, are you happy to see mom? Yes, and she's looking at us. You can hear there's a bit of calling, and there they all are looking at one another. Isn't that beautiful? Listen to them. This is so cool. You know, lions often can be lazy animals and we don't see too much from them, but when they are active, there is just something unbelievable about being around them. Now I'm gonna just go forward because they're gonna go greet the other lionesses that are just in front here. I can see them just lying just to the other side here. And so I'm pretty sure they're gonna go greet them right there. I think they didn't even notice that the moms were actually lying right here. And then eventually one called and they came quickly to see what was going on still kind of trying to work out who exactly this oh look at that we've got greetings going on this is so cool and isn't that a, just a beautiful view is that not one of the best ways to spend the day you've got lines in the middle of the road big dark clouds orange light there is very few things in this world that is better than a view like that that's as good as it gets and a big ball of lions that is busy cuddling with one another you can check look at that there's so much bonding going on right now. You would swear they haven't seen this lioness in days, the way that they're busy rubbing their heads together. You can see that little one is actually trying to push for milk. So she's busy trying to sort of nudge the mother's tummy. Look, trying, trying to get milk out of her. You see that? So they're pushing up, trying to see. Look at the light on her as well. This is amazing. Oh, look at that. It's a ball of lions, everyone. <laughs> So, Rebecca, are you wondering if lions purr? Well, no, they don't. So, lions are not like cheetah and our domestic cats. They have a very different sort of voice box system, and that's what allows them to roar. And so, the roar is different to purring, and that's what classifies them in part of the sort of the part, um, the panthera family group. So, lions, tigers, leopards, and jaguars, because they can all produce roars. The purring cats are cheetahs, African wild cats, and then all the smaller domestic cats, caracals, those are all part of the purring cats. But they make a lot of squeaks, I can tell you that much. Look at this. This is spectacular. Oh, bless you. Sure. Wow, we're being spoiled, everyone. This is why the Inkohuma Pride is such a firm favorite amongst all the guides here, as well as all of a lot of you at home. And you all love spending time with them because of all these incredible interactions that we get with them. The sort of social element that the Inkohuma Pride brings and the, the sort of movements and the, the amazing sightings that we've had means that we end up with just the most incredible visuals of lions when we're with them. They really are a special group of lions. Now I just need to tell Byron, because Byron's in the right area, but he's just going the wrong way. Byron, Byron, Byron. So Byron's just south of me at the moment. There's the other females. They've now spotted the other females. That's why they're running into the bush. Byron, Byron, Byron. So Byron doesn't want to talk to me. So he who says that I need to pay attention is now not paying attention himself, even though I'm trying to call him. Yeah, Byron, you need to head west from where you are. So that uh, leopard crossed west of where you are and where you see us um, heading in a southerly direction. So sorry guys, I'm just in the way. Oh, and a big jump just across the culvert there and up they going. Now, eventually we're going to get them right here. The rest of the pride is lying all just on the other side. But have they gotten up to move? No, there they all are. So we just see them through that gap over there. Craig, do you want me to go forward a bit? I think maybe forward might be better. Let's try forward and just see what we get. It's not that much better, but 
it is better nonetheless. Now the females are getting a bit upset because the cubs are all trying to suckle. They're so hungry at the moment that they're wanting to suckle from their mothers. And so they're causing a little bit of distress amongst the females because they're all over them and nudging them. And I think the females are getting a little bit irritable by what's going on. The good thing is though, is maybe, just maybe, you never know, this leopard might move and alarm calls might start and that might trigger the lionesses to come back again. You can see they're facing that direction. Look, they're looking in the way we just came from and it's possible that they might have heard something again and I wouldn't be surprised if we see these lionesses moving back towards where those that leopard crossed. You know, Craig, do you want me to go back a bit? I'm just going to go back so if you see the picture moving, I do apologize. It's just that there's going to be a better view right there. Look at that. You see, they're looking over their shoulder. They're watching. So, Paul, you're asking if I get the chance, will I check for suckle marks on Amber and the young female? Well, yes, I most certainly will. I'm trying to look. I can't see anything at this stage. And to be honest, the grass is so long. I think we're going to battle to see, actually, if there are any suckle marks. The chance was when they were all on the road. And I actually got so caught up with the little cubs that I forgot to check, to be honest with you. So that is a bit naughty of me. I do apologize. But I certainly will try and look. And if I get a view of them, I definitely will try and sort of see if I can't find some sort of suckle marks on any of them that are there. But to be honest, there was nothing blatantly obvious when I was watching them kind of cross the road. But then again, Amber Eyes wasn't crossing the road now. She was one of the first that got up and ran towards these alarm calls. When the alarm calls first started, in fact, she was the first lioness to start running in this direction, which does not surprise me in any way whatsoever. Amber Eyes always is the one that gets involved. It was her and the female with the blind eye that were leading the charge, followed by this lioness that you see here and then the fourth one that just moved away from us at the moment. But isn't this cute, them grooming themselves? Now, I do apologize about the few branches in the way, but unfortunately they are now on the northern side of the boundary, and so this is as far as I can go, and I'm trying to find the best little gap that I can, but they're just lying behind a little combretum there, and so we're going to have to just have a few branches in the way. But that's okay, it's still very pleasant to be with the lions themselves. So Susie, you're asking why do some of the cubs look like they're spotted? Well, the coats of lions when they are born are spotted, even though they're not referred to as spotted cats like lion and leopard, I mean like leopard and cheetah, they actually do have spots of their own. And so it's not uncommon to see spots. And even on the adults, you'll find spots on their legs sometimes. You can see a little bit on their belly as well. And those will fade with age. Now girls don't go that way. No, that's the wrong way. But I think that's the last we're going to see. Now let's see if there's suckle marks there. No, those are not fresh. Those are from previous female. No. So it looks like... Difficult to see. I can't see which lioness it is. Hopefully it'll turn and look at us and I can see if it's not amber eyes. But it is a bit of swelling there. But it could be residual from these cubs that we've had. I think we're going to, this is the last we're going to see, unfortunately, of the Nkumas this afternoon. Once these two get up, that's going to be the end of that. They're going to go. There's a dam straight north of us here, not far at all. Maybe I would say about 200 meters, and that's where I think they're going to head. But let's stay with them for as long as we can. I see that they've laid down some of them now as well. Nope, onward and forward they're going. see how those black tips to the ears really work well when they're trying to see one another from behind really does contrast very very clearly against the white grass oh the little cub getting some mom time getting a good grooming So Debbie, all the way from Vancouver, you want to know, you well, you say that young leopards will hunt when they're left alone, and we know this because we've seen Hassan and Shungile doing it, 
And you want to know whether the young lions would do the same. Well, most definitely, if there was a monitor lizard or a tortoise or any sort of small animal that came towards the cubs, they would definitely chase and try and get it. It's all part of their nature. There's an instinct that kicks in with these young animals that they must chase. They've also, they've watched the females. They saw what happened now, and they saw how the females went after prey species. And so they had the same sort of side of it, and they tried their best to try and um, get towards there and so they would have learned a valuable lesson and would have tried to see if they can't um, catch things so they definitely will hunt right well we're going to stay with them for as long as we can whether or not they're going to stay with us is anyone's guess and so while we do that i believe byron is racing through the bush to get somewhere i'm not quite sure <laughs> 